We are not. We're moving on to new ones. I appreciate that question, though. All right, we are ready to dive in. I'm going to unfreeze this, and we're going to roll. So, first we're going to talk about what needs to go on your paper before the giant graph, but I want to tell you how the giant graph is going to look. So, let's talk about that. So, because you're not ready for class, and because of your schedule, you're not ready for previous. I'm sorry, chat with me after class. So, when we go to make this, you're going to use most of your paper, except for the top section, because that top section is going to have four, well, kind of four things written in. We're going to compress the parts of this lesson to make your life easier. Right, so notice in 34, 35, and 36, we all work with input and output tables, going from negative four to positive four, and we could actually go further than that. And the last one also involves negative one half and positive one half, so that makes the jumps not quite equal. But if we're smart, we can go ahead and put those in here right now. So at the top of your graph paper, which I guess I'll write here too, <clears throat> make a table, and you can use, not graph, not x, y axes, make a table, and you could use your rulers to set up your table if you want. And we're going to make it have x values going negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, which will make the jump kind of awkward, but then 0, 1 half, 1, 2, 3, 4. So please make that in your graph paper. Uh, yes. Uh, if you want the short one, just tables and graphs. If you want the shortened title. So where their table has output here, we're not going to actually put output there. We're going to put our various functions that we're dealing with. So the first one we're going to talk about together is negative 5 plus 12x. So instead of writing output, we're going to write negative 5 plus 12x. And actually, if we want to be formal, I don't know why my TV keeps doing this. Remember, if anyone else is trying to use this and I'm not around and it doesn't work, unplug 4 back there and plug it back in. So negative 5x plus 12. So we could also write y equals negative 5x plus 12 because that's really what we're looking at. The next one that we'll look at is y equals... 2x plus 1. It, we're just going to make one table and just keep making it bigger. Right? So stack on. We're going to have four down here. Four different functions we look at. Um, is, is that negative 5? Like a line? I'm trying to do it with that. Uh, yes. Negative 5x plus 12. 2x plus 1. If you're playing along at home, these are in the book. Or in the ebook. We are also going to do negative 3x plus 1. I'm, I can't read the below the in x. So here, what might help is if I actually delete my graph paper. I was trying to just show you guys what it's going to look like, but I think it's creating clutter. So your first one, don't write output, but instead write y equals negative 5x plus 12. 2x plus 1. Negative 3x plus 1. Nope, one last one. Oh, so there's going to be three separate tables? No, we're going to... So, there's, kind of. There's going to be three separate output, like lines of output, but we're going to put them on the same graph. We're going to use this... Well, I don't know why I'm pointing there. We're going to put them on the same graph paper, right? The same set of axes, and we're going to use the same input values for each of these. The last one we're going to deal with is x squared. y equals x squared. Yes. So you should have one big table. I wasn't clear about this. 
The input's across the top. One big table. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. That's the awkward jump. Zero, I can't fit them all on here, right? That's why I have to copy paste, because my handwriting is giant. I mean, like, the Hang on. Hang on. Then, the y equals should be written right here. And your first one was negative 5x plus 12. You want these to be stacked, because we're going to compare the output values. So your first y equals, now I'm going to have to shift this, because you know, I write way too big. Negative 5x plus 12. Your next one is a different y equals. That's why I'm doing different colors. We're going to compare these graphs behaviors. 2x plus 1 was the second. The third one. Negative 3x plus 1. If you didn't get them down the first time, yeah, there are four different functions we're looking at here. Those are the same that I just wrote on the other screen, but I think people got confused. Red, blue, green. What? X squared, negative three x plus one. If I go back up the page more. I mean, yeah, that's just a negative. Sorry, that's got like a weird dot. Is that it? Yep, just those four. I'm hoping we have this done like in the next fifteen minutes, so you guys can have some bonus time today to get caught up in whatever. So now, once you have that table built, like close the bottom, make sure it has a bottom. So then you can squiggly line across your paper if you want, but you don't have to. Fill the rest of your graph paper with an x, y axis. Oh, I deleted it. That's my problem. I literally deleted it. My x, y axis, and I don't, yeah, it's not there anymore. And it's really big. Now, here's what I really dislike about when we graph in class. What you're looking at in front of you is a rectangle tall. What you're looking at up here on the smart board is a rectangle wide. Right? Like, so, when I draw stuff up here, it's hard for you to, like, directly translate it onto your paper. Especially when we graph. Come on. So, you, and this looks like they're, these are rectangles, so I don't of that. But say that this is all of the bottom of your graph paper. Right? Imagine that this section is all of the bottom of your graph paper. You're going to go big y-axis, big x-axis, and our x's need to have a minimum of negative 10 and a maximum of positive 10. Now, those, you can decide what your scale of your boxes is. So if you want to make one box one, that's up to you. If you want to make two boxes one, or three boxes equal one, that's fine. But hold up. Your Y scale will be different, because it needs to go, what are you doing? It needs to go from 50 oh. to negative 50. So you have to decide a scale that makes sense. So the first thing we should do is count how many boxes we have to work with. Wait, wait. Does X have to be like the same? Nope. X and Y don't have to have the same scale. We actually had a homework that did that. Yeah, like forced us to do that. Wait, what homework? Maybe it wasn't you guys. It might have been the other class. No, but there is one. a yeah, there is a problem where like the axes are forced to scale differently. So I'm not telling you how to do this because everyone has different graph paper, right? Like some people have little boxes, some people have big boxes. You just have to decide what scale makes sense for you. Now this one, you could try, like if every box is 5, and you could start trying, okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, and you could see will it fit. And if you have too much extra space, you could go back and try something different. But that's one way that we can choose a scale is just pick a scale, try it out. If I choose every box to be two, you know, like two, four, six, eight, I might run out of space and realize, oh crap, I need to pick a bigger scale. Is that your ruler? Stop ringing.
Now I'm going to let you roll on your own, and I'm going to hope that I can trust this. Your objective in the next, I'll check in with you in five minutes, but really I think I should give you at least ten minutes, is to first and foremost, using this table that you made, figure out what the output values would be. So for example, if you'd like to pay attention to your formula, you can go back to your scan. My input value is my x. So when I come to figure out what is the y value here, negative 5 times negative 4, negative times negative is positive, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 12, 32. If I plug in negative 3, negative 5 times negative 3, 15, plus 12, 27, and that is what we're going to do for each of those functions. Then we're going to plot those points. Please don't yourself. Did you just run out of space? Yeah, 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 that's exactly what I said when I was writing that. Because I just write too big, that's why I was trying to just copy and paste. If you really want, that's fine. But I mean, it'd be nice to be able to see the table at the same time as looking at the graph. Are you just saying your scale doesn't work out? You don't have to necessarily go to 50. That just gives you plenty of space. If you can't make it to 50 or negative 50, that's okay. You just may not be able to graph every single.
may use a calculator if you'd like. Up to you. If I was you, as we go to graph these things, I would use colored pencils. So if you would like, grab two, uh, two, grab four colored pencils of different colors, if you would like. It doesn't seem like a lot of you would like. Drawing the lines. And if you want them to all be the same color, that's up to you, but my brain works in colors. Yeah, I color code everything. Yeah, I that. Uh, Sorry, the Catan's in the way. Wednesdays are weird, and you gotta figure out a better solution. No. Unnecessary. Nope. Great question. So as we get comfortable making graphs, once you choose your scale, you do not have to label every point. Oh, you totally can. So my graph, I have not made it as far as I need to. And I'm going to have to figure out if that totally goofed me up or if I can still work with this. But I'm going to put my, I'll leave this on the top screen. I'm going to put the smart slides onto the bottom screen. I know. I'm just trying to move stuff over here. You don't really need to see the Y. So your table should be filled in now. So we should be able to help me out. And not maybe for all of them, but at least for your negative 5x plus 12. So these values were what? Who will just read me off like all? Alex, you just want to do negative 5x plus 12? Seventeen, fourteen point five, twelve, 
Wait, this is two is two? Uh, yeah, two, two, three, negative, three, negative, and negative, negative. Oh. So now, in my graph, now you could use whatever color you choose, but... I would, up in my table, kind of shade over that y equals with the color, if I'm using the color. And then at negative 4, wherever you made your negative 4, you want to go up to 32, if you can make it to your 32. Oh, I have a 32. Oh, yeah, colored pencils right over there. So then at negative 3, we want to go up to 27. And this is what we're doing. We're plotting our points for all of these. Negative 2 is 22. Negative 1 is 17. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> now, 0 is 12, and we know that for a couple reasons. What did we talk about yesterday? If I slide this back over... And we bring back up that form that was like y equals, there were a bunch of letters involved. y equals a bunch of letters involved, right? y equals mx plus b. And we identified that this number that's added or subtracted is your y-intercept. So notice that with that having the plus 12, that's where our y-intercept is. Oh, I covered it up. This is the problem two screens. You have to keep track of what's what. That is where our y-intercept is, right? 12. Now, if I connect these, what do I see? I might have a point in the wrong place. I think I put this in the wrong place. Oh, I put my 26 in the wrong place. I totally done goofed. This is 26, this is 28, that's actually my 30. Ah, snap. I had those in the wrong place. If we did this right, giant if there, because I didn't even do it right, they should line up in a straight line. Now there will be a little discrepancy because, you know, it's we're human. Once you have all four of these input outputs filled in in the table that you've made and on the graph that you made, that's it. And the rest of the time is yours. That is all we're doing today. We're going to go over this tomorrow because I want to give you as much time as you need. So if you need the whole rest of the class period to do this, that's okay. you got like 20 minutes still. If you are, you know, a, a fast graffer and you get done two minutes from now, then you have the rest of the time to do anything academic that you need to. Yeah, not being free. So you should end up with four lines on your graph. You should end up with four lines on your graph. I need a color. Yeah, that's always the hardest part. So. If you, here, I would almost just go ones because it's always easy to go by ones. But up here, you can go to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you're trying to get to 50, you probably just go by ones. You know what I mean? Go to five, ten, fifteen, twenty, seven. Or go by fours, then you'll only make it to 40 or whatever. But we know that 50 will be far enough. Now, the thing is, if you do your whole table first, if you fill in this part up here first, you'll know the smallest and the biggest y values are going to be in there. If you fill in that table first. Wait, what was the one for negative one happening? If we fill in our tables first, right, if we fill in, that's not your class. If we fill in our table, we'll know the smallest and biggest y values that we need.
Um, just because then we can extend the line out and see even more points. So I want you guys to get used to going from negative 10 to 10. The only reason we changed our y is because the functions we have have bigger y values. Wait, did you not do the second half of the graph? Uh, I didn't really need to. Our points, when I put those points on there, they should be on there. So, for those of us that work a little bit slower, our first graph, the blue one, the negative 5x plus 12, these are the values that we should have, except we also squeezed in a negative half and a positive half. Sorry, that's not, that was the first one we did. Give me a second. I'm going to make this so I can write on Is it. Is that the negative 3x plus 1? Give me a second so I can write on it. Good. 33 we just did together. Right? I mean, you could share. Like, that's sharing is pairing. Our outputs for the rule 2x plus 1 should look like this, except we squeezed two extras, right, because we're making this fit for all of them. So our extra values that we put right here are a negative half and our positive half. Who can give me those values? I mean, or we can compute them together. Right? What's half of two? What's half of two? One. One. Okay, I know we're all doing our own work, but somebody should at least be able to answer. Then make it negative. Okay, negative one. Plus one. Oh, oh, this is zero. At negative one half, the y is zero. This makes sense because this is our y intercept, right? When x is zero, y is one. And then when I plug in one half, oh, this is just two. Now our slope here is actually two. Every time we go up by one x, we go up by two y. So guys, if you don't have that filled in, for that rule, 2x plus 1, please fill that in and plot those points. For this rule, 2x plus 1. Was that the second one? Uh, the, yes, that was the second one we wrote down. We had negative 5x plus 12. Hmm? I just messed up the right Yeah, so check your values. Then plot those points. Crap. Oh, oh god. What did I do? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Wait. Is something way off? No, I think I accidentally put the negatives in the positive section. So I guess I just need to flip my paper. <laughs> I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> Aren't you just called this negative number? Oh god. You're getting so worked up like, Wait. oh no. Oh, oh no. Wait. Negatives are on the left, and negatives are on the bottom. Yeah. So you gotta, yeah. In the in the y in the y negative will be on the bottom. So I should this should technically be flipped. So you were wrong too. Wait. I'm so confused. Don't listen to Alex. Because isn't this negative on y? Versus negative on x axis because this is negative. Oh, but this is negative for x, not y. So I literally copied off the next one. All the negative is this side, so this side. So technically, should this be a cube? Oh, so I'm just there. I'll take that as a yes. 
Wait, so we're finding it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this or this uh, so this would be negative four and then negative seven. Oh, by the way, I'm collecting this tomorrow as your mini mastery for chapter two, Yay. or chapter three. So, for those of you not taking this seriously and just kind of sitting around like, eh, whatever, you might want to decide to turn it on for the last ten minutes. And we're going to go over this all together, but for those of you just sitting there farting around... Yeah. Yeah. What we did together in class, just you doing it, is our mini mastery for this chapter. Or at least a mini mastery. It's going to be the last grade of quarter one. Which everybody should master if you've worked along and done this with us. Wait, wait. I got you. Okay? Your table, your table should have four different rules. The wow. first one, we filled in together, and we graphed the points together. The second one we just talked about, please verify that you have negative 7 up to positive 9, and you should have two bonus values that CK didn't even do. Our next layer of that table was for the rule negative 3x plus 1. Please verify your values for that, or write them in if you haven't done it yet. Oh, that's fine. Wait. Uh, I know you're struggling. Ah, uh, don't touch me. Hey, now don't touch me. There, everywhere is right on the square. Let's start going. Thirteen, and ten. Seven. Now be careful, because we changed our table. Right here and right here, we have bonus values. Right, That CPM doesn't have, because we're going to talk about those in future classes. What's our bonus value here? But what's the Y value? there. <laughs> Negative 3 times negative half. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. So that becomes 1 and a half plus 1 is 2.5. A positive half. This is where it's weird and you guys will likely fall into trap doors if you don't do your work carefully. Negative 3 times a positive half is negative 1 and a half. Plus one, this is a negative zero point five. Please check your bonus values. And then last layer of our table. The last layer of our table for x squared. And this has our bonus. Yes. Wait a second. Sorry. This is, I went back, so this is still for negative 3x plus 1. And guys, we should recognize the rule, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. The only place that doesn't happen is where we put those bonuses, right? Because we went by halves, which we did that on purpose. We're going to look at that tomorrow. Now, I got, I got to show x squared. We can come back to this if we need. x squared, this, I went back instead of forward. This, like we talked about either yesterday or two days ago, a negative times a negative is a positive. So when you square negatives, when done correctly, you get positive answers. And when you square fractions, a portion times a portion gets even smaller. If I give Xander half of a half of a half of a pizza, he's like, dude, bro, come on. That's a slice, right? Yeah. Half of a half of a half. It's a slice. This, this is big brain time. Thank you, so please check your x squared, and then you have the rest of the time just make sure that you have the, the graphs. Now, I will warn you, this graph will look different. One of these things is not like the other.
homework so I'm going to put that back up here to make sure that we're good when we collect those homeworks we're collecting this paper so again eyes ears and focus 311 through 313 are due tomorrow kind of really Friday because I'll give you a grace day but they should be done by tomorrow they should be done and ready to turn it by tomorrow I'll give you a grace day but they need to be in by Friday and that's not me like I'm going to put it in as late, and then, like, no, I won't put grades until Friday. Right? Get it to me by Friday, you're good. What if we screw this up? Then you get progressing, and you'll come back and do it again. Like, you'll fix it. What has happened if you screwed up other things this year? You can go back and fix it. So, yeah? No. It's not about right, wrong at the moment. It's just about did you do it. Now, you could check with each other. There, put the ruler away if you don't need it. Um, so what we said we need for this is tables and graphs. Does anyone need to check the output values? Is your table not filled in and you want some help? For what rule, Hazel? For what rule? 2x what? Here you go. Negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1. Then watch out for the bonus. 0, 1, bonus 2, then 3, 5, 7, 9. If anyone else needs to check, 2x plus 1. Fair. Do you hear yourself making animal noises? Like, seriously. Do you understand that that's not appropriate? Please stop. I don't want to have to continue to ask you to stop. It gets frustrating. If anyone needs to check negative 3x plus 1, here we had a couple partial values. Be careful with the negative when you're multiplying. A negative times a negative makes a positive. Hey, Xander, are all your graphs done? Well, why are you just having a party over there? Aside from the integer shifts, be careful because we have partials. If you need to check x squared, there you go. They're all actually positive. Yeah. For the ones that don't have the one half, you just go on us to write those out. What do you mean? For the ones that so we wrote the, them in. The tables you the tables that don't already have them written in, you want us to still solve those. So what I had you guys put on your paper had the negative half and the positive half. Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah, but do you want us to fill those spaces in? You mean like when you go to make the graph? Yeah. Yeah. Plot. So the thing I'm hoping that you realize is once you plot up three points, actually just three, you can actually make the line. It says for x squared. Because the behavior doesn't stay the same, right? Please clip this in. That's called a parabola. Nothing. Bear and I are having private conversations. Um, super secret big brain conversation. Um, please clip that in so you don't lose it. And that's it for today. I just really I need to learn that.